Hello again. At the end of the last video, we so, so in the last video we used the branch current method to come up with these three equations here on the right. And the task at the end of the video was that you should find the values of I1, I2, and IP. In reality, all we really need to find is IP because the question asks us to find the value of IP. Okay? So all we really need to find is IP, but then it's a good exercise to at least find I1, I2, and I3. Now, once we go ahead and find that, um, you should have arrived at the at values of, for I2 as you should have arrived at 1.652 amperes as the current for I2. You should have found your I1 to be equal to 3.052 amperes. And if I just scroll down just a little, we, you should have arrived at your I p has been equal to 0 0.2174 amperes thereabouts okay so these are values you should have arrived at so just a quick recap the branch current method we assign currents to each branch and then we write out loop equations using kvl Kirchhoff's voltage law okay so that's the branch current method the second method we're going to use to solve this same question is the mesh analysis method so let me write mesh analysis over here mesh analysis now basically this method has two steps okay basically this method has two steps and this is quite similar to the branch current method but it's distinct in its own right so first step for this we assign loop currents okay so we assume that there is a um, current inside each loop so assign loop currents. So we assume that there is a uh, there is a current inside of each loop. Once we have done that, we write our loop equations, loop equations using um, KVL. Okay, so we make use of Kirchhoff's voltage law to write out the loop equations. Now notice that this second step is the same as what we had with branch current analysis. Okay. Is the same as what we had with branch current analysis. The difference between these two, between um, um, between branch current analysis and mesh analysis, is that it's the first step. Here we assign a current to each branch, but with mesh analysis we assign a, we assign a current to each loop. Okay, so we assign we assume that each loop has its own um, its own current. So maybe let me use a different color of pen of ink over here. Um, for this analysis just in case I tend to scroll up later on so what we're going to do is assign a current to each loop now you could assign your current in any way and most people just tend to assign them in a clockwise direction so we assume there is a, a current inside this loop that is moving in a clockwise direction like so and you now assign a current if I a name to that current so let's call that in this case now the current that we are told to find in our question is this current here ip okay but ignore that for now okay just ignore that detail for now okay so ignore that detail for now um all that really matters for now is we assign our loop current so when we assign our loop current let's call this i small letter a then we will have a loop a current inside this loop here let's assume if it's also a current that is going in the clockwise direction and let's call that current i b now, for the fun of it, I will assign a current in the, in the counterclockwise direction in this loop. The reason for that is just so that you realize that you could assign your currents in any loop, in any direction. Okay, In each loop, you could assign, assign your currents in, each, in any direction you choose. So I will have a counterclockwise uh, current in this, in, in this particular loop. But just to emphasize once again, Take note that you're, you are the one assigning this loop current, so you could choose any direction you want. Now, based on these, we will go ahead and write our loop equations using KVL. Now, to write our loop equations using KVL, um, first of all, let's start. So, you start from a certain point, and then we go around the loop, and then we know that the total sum of voltages will be equal to zero because that is what KVL says. So our first equation we're going to write out, let's start for this first loop A, the A, the loop, the A loop. So when the A loop, we have 10 volts. So let's start from 10 volts. We have 10. Now, if we are moving in the clock, since we are moving in the clockwise direction, 
the current A inside this A loop is moving in the current in the, is moving in the clockwise direction. Current B is also moving in the clockwise direction in, in the B loop. But take note that A and B in this 5 ohm resistor, A will be moving opposite to B. Okay? I hope that is clear to see that B moves in this direction and then will now move towards the left when it is going through 5. Whereas I, A, will go up and then move to the right when it is going through 5. So you could see the resultant current inside this um, 5 ohm resistor is a current moving towards the right that is equal to IA minus IB. Okay? Um, if that sounds a little confusing, you can pause the video and, 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 and consider it. The resultant current going through the 5, five ohm resistor is IA minus IB, and we, that is assuming the current is moving to the right in the 5 ohm resistor, we have IA minus IB. Now, having said that, the way I tend to work, the way I tend to work is I ask the question, which loop am I in? Okay, so now I'm going to write this equation, but I'm not going to talk about resultant currents. I'll just go ahead and write the equation. Um, but you need to understand the I, the concept of, of um, resultant currents because that really will help you understand what I'm going to do next. Okay, so once you get to a resistor, as long as we're moving in the direction of the current in the resistor, then our polarity will be negative. Now what we are trying to do is we are going to sum all the voltages in the loop. KVL says the total sum of voltages in a loop will be equal to zero. Now we know that Ohm's law says that the potential difference across a resistor is equal to the current going through that resistor multiplied by the resistance of that resistor. So V is equal to IR. Okay, so we know that Ohm's law says that V is equal to IR. So for every resistor, once we know the current going through it and we know the resistance of the resistor, we can get the voltage across that resistor. So if we are going in, if, if the current is going to the right through a resistor, if the current is going through to the right through a resistor, the voltage in that, the potential difference across that resistor will be flowing to the left. Okay, so we could say that potential difference will be moving in opposite direction to the direction of flow of the current. Okay, that is actually an, an impl implication of KVL, but I will not go into those details right now. So we are moving, when we get to this 5 ohm resistor, we are moving to the right because in this loop, in the A loop, we are moving in a clockwise direction. Since we are moving in the clockwise direction, whenever we get to the 5 ohm resistor, we will be moving towards the right, okay? We are moving towards the right. Now, we said the resultant current in the 5 ohm resistor, we are taking it as a current moving towards the right, um, and it is equal to IA minus IB. So, since we are moving in the direction of the current going through the resistor, then our polarity for the voltage will be negative. And it will be equal to V is equal to IR. The resistance is 5 multiplied by the current. The current going through it is IA minus IB. Okay? Now we get to this 8 ohm resistor. We are moving downwards through this resistor. Since in this loop we are moving clockwise, so we are, when we get to this resistor, we are now moving downwards. Um, and look, we are moving downwards. Now if you look at it, the resultant current in this resistor will be IA plus IC because uh, I, both IA and IC will be moving downwards in this resistor, okay? So because we are moving in the direction of the current, we'll have minus 8 into IA minus IC. There's no other component in this A loop, so this is equal to 0. And let's call this our first equation, okay? Our first equation, our first loop equation. Let's come to the second loop, that's the B loop. So we come to the B loop, we could start from anywhere, okay? So let's say we start from this point over here. Let's say we start from this this point over here. If we start from here and start moving towards the right, we get to a, a resistor. We are going in the direction of the current moving through it. The current moving through it is IB, okay? So since we are going in the same direction, the polarity will be negative. So we start with minus 10 times the current current is IB okay so minus 10 IB we keep on going in the clockwise direction until we get to this 4 ohm resistor in the form resistor we are moving towards the left 
okay we are moving towards the left the resultant current inside this resistor is ib plus ic okay and it's moving towards the left so we're moving in the same direction as the current polarity is negative and it is equal to 4 multiplied by i b plus i c okay now i just realized i wrote a wrong polarity here this should have been plus i'm sorry about that this should have been plus there because we have i a plus i c okay so four into minus four into i b plus i c so we're in the b loop we've gone past this resistor the 10 ohm resistor we've gone past the 4 ohm resistor next we have the 5 ohm resistor okay so we are now we now want to go past the 5 ohm resistor we are going in that direction remember we said the resultant current in this um, 5 ohm resistor is moving towards the right and its value is ia minus ic so now when we are moving inside this loop towards the left we are moving against the current since we are moving against the current the polarity will be positive and it will be 5 the resistance multiplied by the current we said the current is ia minus ib okay and that's equal to zero call this our second loop equation so we have a third loop we're going to write the equation for that we could start from any point let's start from okay let's start from this point down here let's start from this point down here now we start from this point down here we start moving note we are going counterclockwise in this loop that's what we wrote we are going counterclockwise in this loop so start from this point here start moving to the right when we move get to this um um, voltage source take note that you have your positive here you have the negative up there so since we are going in the counterclockwise direction we are going against the flow of the against the polarity of the voltage source so the first um, voltage we're going to write will be minus four negative because we are going against the direction of the voltage source okay so we have minus four we are going counterclockwise we get to the 4 ohm resistor once again we have already found the resultant current in this resistor we are moving in the same direction as that resultant current the resultant current was ib plus ic and we are moving in the same direction so polarity is negative minus 4 into ib plus ic next we get to this 8 ohm resistor once again we have we are moving downwards in the direction of the resultant current we found the resultant current already as ia plus ic so i'm moving in the same direction polarity is negative once again so minus eight into ia plus ic and this sum is equal to zero so we have found our three loop equations okay we have found our three loop equations and that is fine that will work for us so we found our three loop equations that will work for us now we can go ahead and solve this using simultaneous equations so i will stop this video at this point and let you go ahead and solve these three equations to find your ia ib and ic now once you have done find, find when you've done finding your ia ib and ic remember that our task actually this question gives us one task and the task that we actually have in this question is simple we are told to find the current moving in this branch the current that is moving downwards inside this branch and the name of that current is ip so i could ask a simple question when you have found ia ib and ic what will be the value of ip okay what will be the value of ip so you could um this video i'll stop this video at this point find ia ib and ic based on these three loop equations and when you're done with that find the value of ip okay thank you